my initial thoughts were not a lot to be honest really. We'd had the phone call to the City of Liverpool Gymnastics Club saying, you know, could this girl go for a trial? Um, my first meeting with Amanda was back in 1997. When I first moved to her, <laughs> I was quite scared of her. Um, what she told me to do, I would do and just got on with it. I loved her, I loved um, her work in ethic. As long as I worked hard for her and did what she wanted, um, you got on just fine. <laughs> She would always be watching to see where I was, what I was doing, and basically it was I watching her. And that's not for being, you know, like, oh, look at me, I'm the best or anything like that. She just wanted my attention. And when a gymnast wants that, all you can do is give. Beth has matched Amanda's dedication. And as a coach, I can tell you, you coach lots and lots of kids. Very, very rarely do you meet one who has as much desire as you have. And I think Amanda and Beth, they matched each other. Yeah, Amanda was the big kind of mind behind all of my routine. She would come in and say, I woke up at five o'clock in the morning with a brand new bar routine with you. She was constantly trying to put new ideas together. We were very fortunate because uh, uh, Amanda's inventivity and best ability to swing and uh, uh, to use the hanging position on bars uh, gave both of them the edge. I was lucky enough from a very early stage through Adrian Stan that gave me the opportunity to go to World Championships with senior teams and I could look around, see what various things were going on, see what was happening in the gymnastic world, and then start to have a little think of, well, what if we did this, or what if we did that? Bessie's repertoire on bars is amazing. I don't think uh, in the nearest future that repertoire can be developed by anybody else in, uh, in, in the world. Even leading up to London, I had three different bar routines that I would train each day. She would say, right, you've got one of bar routine one, two of bar routine two, and one of bar routine three. And everyone would just kind of look at me and say, how the heck do you know which bar routine you do? But that's how me and Amanda had always worked. I guess for some of it, I was stupid enough to have a go. Um, obviously, the big one being my own skill, the twaddle. Um, I remember we came back from, I think it was World Championships in 2007 and it had got to the stage the judges kind of knew my routine before I was going up and we wanted to give that something extra special so she, she kind of said to me one day why don't you just catch with crossed hands and I think myself and everyone I was training with kind of looked at her as if to say are you barking mad um, but I tried it and I remember catching it and thinking oh my god what am I doing I'm going to fly off. Um, but after that, it, it just seemed second nature. The thing was, me and Amanda had built up such a trust within each other that I knew she would never let me do anything that would put me in danger. Um, so I trusted her. I think throughout my career, um, most people have obviously focused towards the end on me just being a bars and floor specialist. Um, but I did do the all around up until 2008. She liked three pieces with Cole Bean, the not a piece that she did like. Although again, she would work really, really hard. On Bean, most of my routines were based um, around somersaults. So I had pipe front mount, tuck front, pipe front on the beam, a two and a half twist dismount, jumps and leaps. She used to have some cracking vaults, to be fair. She was really good forwards, and she had um, a pretty nifty pipe front half, which changed into a straight front half. It didn't actually get competed, but she also had a pretty good pipe front somersault full turn on vaults, which, again, never got quite competed, but it was there for a, for a two-vaulter. We probably made a European final on that as well, but hey-ho, never mind, never mind. I did enjoy doing the all-around and when I moved to the two pieces, um, the first couple of competitions that I did, I did miss 
having that opportunity to have another go at the competition. I always had to just sit out for the all-around competition and it was quite hard at first. You know, she, she was an all-arounder. She could dominate at least uh, uh, Europe. In the early days, Beth didn't look a superstar. She wasn't one of the superstars at all. She was very much a gymnast who was fighting to be recognised. She first did her first world in 2001, so I think she's, she must have done about 12 world championships now. And obviously she was the new kid on the block then, the little geek that just did absolutely everything as she was told and, you know, carried, the t carried them through and did a great job there also. For me, going to the World Championships, I remember going in 2001, and for me it was just a massive thing to go to a World Championships. You weren't even thinking about trying to make a final or trying to pick up a medal. I always remember Adrienne Stan saying, you know, she, she had been the revelation of that World Championships for him. She had shown that she was going to be solid and dependable. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't, I don't belong here, like it was Korkina and there was Russians, Romanians, and British gymnasts weren't known to kind of be in that part. I remember warming up on bars and Corkina had stolen my spray. And I didn't want to go and get it back, but me, Amanda made me. She was like, it's your spray, you need it, go and get it back. And um, I went and got it and I was terrified of it. Um, but that was kind of a changing moment. I think for myself and Amanda, from that moment on, I wasn't just going to go, I was going to make a final and to hopefully come home with a medal. We saw her go from fighting really on the outside of the team to becoming the leader, the star of the team, the leader of the teams. It just goes to show whatever type of shape you are, whatever type of gymnast walks in your gym at the age of eight, nine, ten, they can do it. What you must, what gymnasts, coaches and parents must remember, Beth actually failed her condition set at elite grade and she had to redo it, or she had to work hard to redo it, but she achieved that and look what's happened since. Injuries have been a massive part of my career. I mean, since the age of 12, um, I picked up my first major injury. I didn't realise at the time how big of an injury it was. Um, it was only when I made it back to full fitness that my mum and Amanda and my parents kind of said, actually, that could have been the end of your career. Um, I mean, our attitude to injuries, it was just like our attitude to training. It was part of training. Injuries come and go but they do come and go and that's what young gymnasts have to learn. You know, you've got to remember she had a, a pretty bad injury at the age of 13 which took her out of gymnastics for six months. For the first week I was literally learning how to walk. I'd gone from full routines preparing for a European Championships to not even being able to run. So. Um, it can be the hardest point of your career, but I think it does determine what type of gymnast you are. If you're willing to put that rehab in, you can definitely get back from an injury. Amanda, I think, sort of halfway through in my career, every time I got injured, she just kind of said, it's not the first time and it definitely won't be the last time. I think the worst part for me was 2005 Europeans. I saw a different side to her. Um, she'd always been you know, this brave person that never showed any emotion. And then suddenly I got stretched out. Um, she went with the hospital with my dad. And for the first time, I kind of saw that fear in her that injuries can happen and sometimes they can be dangerous. But She's tried, she didn't show it to me, but I could tell um, how much she cared for me. Uh, we had to make a decision with Amanda uh, two, three years ago now, yeah, to protect her, uh, her uh, uh, operated leg, yeah, to take her out of uh, uh, the beams and the uh, vault. The actual date 
I can tell you now, it happened just before we went out to Beijing. The last training session that we were at home, just before we flew, she was on the bars and she just did something and she made nothing, didn't, wasn't necessarily a fall or anything, and she just sort of made this little yelping sound. And it was like, okay, what's the problem there? She just said, I don't know, I've, I've just felt something in my rib. The doctors were making sure, are you okay? And it still didn't seem to improve. From there on in, we went to bars, we went to floor. So in Beijing, the warm up and the preparation in Macau was basically, can we actually get a fit just to do two pieces? And from there on in, that was it, two pieces. Beijing definitely has to be the biggest disappointment of my career. Um, even now, it's kind of hard to talk about. She did this bar routine in qualification that was, oh my God, what are you doing? Please just get her off the bar, get to the end. She bashed her foot on the downswing for the underheely, which made the mark love really poor, which made the ginger even smaller. I don't know how she got through the routine without falling off. And I know a comment was actually made, any other person than a world champion would not have been able to get through that bar routine. So again, she survived and with relief, it was relief that she actually got to the final. I knew that I had the potential to be on that medal roster. She, it was literally the last element that literally overrode her handstand a little too much. And then as she landed, you could see with a shake of her head, she just thought, it's gone. As soon as my score came up and I was in fourth, it, it is the hardest place to be. And I didn't want to be a part of that. I know that I did an interview about two, three hours later and basically just said, I won't be in London 2012, I'm too old. And I didn't think in heart of heart that I could put another four years in to pick up that same disappointment. She came forth, but a few days later within the competition, um, the organisers had actually come and asked, would Beth actually do the gala? Well, anyone that does the Olympic gala is a gold medalist. And for her, it was a bit of an honour. And to get up and do that bar routine, it just shows that I'm not quite finished. There was a little still glint, I'm not quite finished, even though when we walked out of the village, I wouldn't have been 100% sure whether she was going to carry on or not. I knew deep down I still had that one dream to achieve and that Amanda would be there 100% to support it. If she turns up and she wants to go again, that's what we go, that's what we do. And luckily enough, she did. I mean, what you've got to think is, if she didn't actually turn up and do that, she wouldn't have had all the European titles and more world titles that she had to her name. I was more inspired. I definitely wanted that dream. I never openly admitted that I was going to go to 2012, but I knew deep down, Amanda knew deep down, that unless there was an injury or a reason that I couldn't go to London, then there would be nothing to stop me. You know, um, I try to compare a little bit. Uh, after somebody like Nadia Komanec, when a great champion, a great Romanian champion, Katerina Sabo, has been asked, are you now Nadia Komanec number two? She replied, no, I'm Katerina Sabo number one. And I think uh, Best Weddle can say, I'm Best Weddle number one. Times have moved on and it's like now, you know, she is a recognised person in her own right, you know. The hype of coming back from our house, we came back, her parents picked us up and at the airport there was people pointing going, that's, that's Beth, that's that gymnast. And it was like, why do they know who Beth is type of thing. After London 2012, it was just a whole new world. Um, going out straight after you won your medal. You couldn't walk down the street, people just wanted to stop and congratulate you, tell you how long they'd supported you and what they were doing when you won the medal. Even a year on, people still tell me now where they were when I won the medal. It's like the general public, if you sort of say to them now, oh, name me a gymnast, they'll probably turn around and go, oh, that tweddle, twoddle, that one, that gym, she's good, isn't she? That's how they come about. Whereas, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it would have been Nadia Komenech, Olga Kaur, but, but now they all know Beth, which is great. Obviously, having done Dancing on Ice, the profile's gone even bigger, but 
I hope to use that to my advantage in the fact that I do want to inspire the younger generation. I don't want them um, thinking that I'm just something that's unattainable. I want them to realise that as a seven-year-old I did gymnastics because I enjoyed it. I never had this big dream of becoming an Olympic medalist. Well, Beth's always very, very encouraging to all the younger gymnasts. If you like a big sister and give them lots of encouragement, help them through the bad times, uh, and show that and show practically to them that if you don't let the bad times get you down, there's a silver lining. She's been obviously a big part of a role model for British gymnastics and the national girls, but also within her club, right? Any little kid from someone just walking through the door to girls that she would train with, girls in different groups, if they were having problems or whatever, she'd be there to, she'd walk past and come on, it's not a problem. You've got to have that certain person within your club. It doesn't have to be a high level gymnast, but if you've got a role model that's got a, you know, a good heart, looking after the rest of the club, the club will survive and move on. A lot of people don't know her uh, intrinsic qualities as a human being. Uh, she, she has shown uh, humanity, she has shown resilience, she has shown uh, uh, friendship, she has shown cleverness, she has shown most of the qualities people are aiming for. I'd love for every child in this country to have a go at gymnastics. They might love it, they might hate it, but at least they've tried it. Um, but for me, I just want them to try sport. It's given me so much throughout my career, so many opportunities, so many chances of making friends, travelling, and every event that I do, if I can put a smile on one child's face, then I've done my job. The biggest advice that I've learned is you don't have to achieve everything overnight. Um, I think as a youngster, I kind of wanted it there and then and I've kind of proved that it can take a long time to achieve your lifelong dream. It took me 20 years from when I started gymnastics to when I picked up an Olympic medal. Obviously I picked up medals along the way, but that one long dream um, took 22 years to achieve. So you don't have to achieve it straight away. You can take time to do it. Um, my relationship with Amanda has obviously changed over the years, um, but yeah, she's, she's been the biggest person within my career. Um, without her, I wouldn't have achieved half of what I've achieved, um, probably not any of it. As a coach, when you start coaching, all you want to do is create a bit of a gymnast, okay? Whether that be like, first of all, a county representative and a champion, then a regional, then a national. And to be like, to create a British champion, for me in my lifetime, was like, oh my God, that is fabulous to do that. She's been there for the, the good times and she's also been there for the not so good times. She was always there for me. There's nothing else I can say about her. She, she knew me inside out. There's no one else that could have got me to where I am. But to help, you know, someone achieve a European medal, a world medal, Olympic medal, it's just like Beth has helped me be a better coach and a better person. And I love her. <laughs>